Affaltebach, near Stuttgart, the home of Mercedes AMG. Formed at the end of the 60s by Hans Werner Aufrecht and Erhard Melcher. At first, they modified Mercedes Benz production models and focused on motorsport with success. By 1971, they were already celebrating a spectacular victory at the 24 hour race in Spa. Today, AMG is part of Mercedes Benz and develops sports cars like the SLS AMG and the AMG GT family. The most powerful model to date in this range is a Mercedes AMG GTR. But what has it got to do with the Nürburgring? AMG has been racing on the Nürburgring for many years in a variety of race series and has had great success. Lastly, with the GT3, which at the 24-hour race in 2016 took the first four places. It is precisely such experiences gained on and with the Nürburgring's Nordschleife that are incorporated into the development of the GTR. The Nordschleife is undoubtedly the most challenging racetrack. It demands more from the driver than any other track I know. And to bring out the best in such a car there is, of course, is also very challenging. It's there that the car has to prove itself. Hockenheim, Sachsenring, Laguna Seca, they're all great racetracks, but the proof comes on the Nordschleife. The challenge we faced in developing the vehicle was to deal with increasing demands, that is, greater induced forces simply through the vehicle's driving profile and the sharpened suspension. And then to deliver that with less distortion and less deformation in the vehicle. That means the greatest possible weight reduction yet, with more content and with measures to increase rigidity. Dynamic handling is not a feature of the GTR, rather the GTR is dynamic handling. It's a composition of many individual components that together produced outstanding dynamic handling. We've taken a rear axle steering system and a traction control system straight from motorsport. We've got systems that motorsport would love to have, but isn't allowed to use due to the rules. The rear axle steering is one such example, as is active aerodynamics. All of these individual components make up the GTR's dynamic handling. We do a lot via simulation, but achieving the car's feel, giving each of our cars a certain personality, that's something no computer or simulation can do. That's done by people who ultimately spend a long time driving the GTR, learning its limits, experiencing how it reacts to those limits, and meticulously working it out. From a developer's perspective, the GTR was another chance to really go one better. We were able to take a decisive step forwards, and things that we had previously been unable to implement because their time had not yet come, or they were not yet technically possible, they were things that we could now implement in this vehicle, and now there were no longer any limitations. If it was conceivable and of benefit, we did it. The car reacts differently to normal vehicles. The first time I had the car in the wind tunnel, nothing in the textbooks applied. Due to its proportions, its overall package, this car is special aerodynamically special. Any aerodynamics expert familiar with normal car development that had this car in a wind tunnel would naturally be surprised. After over two years of development and tens of thousands of hours of testing, primarily on the Nürburgring, the GTR was ready for the road. The feel you get driving the vehicle is simply indescribable. Yes, naturally. I, the whole team that developed the car, were all proud of it. Time to show off the GTR in fitting fashion.